Hello everyone, I'm Meg Oliver in New York and welcome to this edition of Money Matters. The current economic climate has many of us thinking about how we can turn tough situations into profitable ones. One strategy used by the most successful is creative deal making. Whatever our profession or business, we should all understand the principles of creative deal making. So here with tips on how you can become a better deal maker is entrepreneur and author of the book You Can Still Win, Andre Taylor. Hi Andre, welcome back. Hey Meg, great to see you. So the deal, it's, it's really about being a salesperson, right? Well, selling is a big part of it. I think the other part of it is really being creative and also being able to service the deal. It's a, it's a total package. You've got to be able to see it and you've got to be able to make it happen. Okay, so that's a, you know, it's a good explanation, but give me a really a hardcore example of a deal. Well, I think one of my favorite examples is uh, early in the life of one of my ventures, we were really looking to f uh, figure out how we could get into a market that was hard to get into. What we did is we approached a global telecommunications company, and that company was able to help us gain credibility. They gave us uh, they gave us cash. They also uh, gave us a uh, Manhattan office space and put us in a position where we could actually move into that market successfully uh, in a very very tough environment. Okay, so you also have some tips for the everyday person out there, and the first one is to decide what you would like to accomplish. Give me an example. Well, I think you've got to figure out. Are you looking to build uh, greater customers? Do you want more credibility? Do you want to be able to do it faster? Are you looking to, to broaden the scope of your service or product? There's a lot of different things you can do with a partnership, and it's always helpful to know up front what it is that you want to do so that you can have a concrete discussion with someone who can help you. Okay, next up you suggest looking for people and companies with complementary goals. What does that mean? Well, sometimes uh, a lot of entrepreneurs will take for granted their uh, access to a market, their ability to understand a market, their know-how, their particular vision, and there may be someone that wants that, and you might not realize that what you have and take for granted is extremely valuable to someone else. So you want to find a company or an organization that is targeting the same kind of customers and has the same objective that you have. Okay, now do you ever look outside the box and go the opposite way? Oh, absolutely. I think there's a great opportunity for companies to partner uh, in a complementary way. Uh, for example, I, I think that now they're, they're all under one roof, but uh, there's, a, there's a nice connection between, say, Baskin Robbins and, and uh, Dunkin' Donuts that has emerged into uh, a great organization and a great stop where, where co consumers can walk in and get both of those products. Right. Every parent's nightmare, basically. I know, exactly. Right? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Now, let's go back to your tips. The other way, um, you suggest approaching someone or a company about a deal is important about the way you do it. And you say to approach them directly or through an influential intermediary. Well, it's always a good idea to be able to just approach an organization and say, look, I think we can work together. I think there's a lot of opportunity in this market and just knock on the door. That's what I did essentially. But if you've got someone inside, that can really be very helpful. Uh, in the earlier example I gave you, one of the things we found out was that we actually knew someone inside. Didn't realize that, realize that right away, but that person was able to help us understand how the organization thought, uh, how to deal with some of the politics that existed, and actually sort of let us know what was going on with our deal when things got quiet. All right, and you want to be taken seriously. So you say it's important to put it all in writing so you can develop a clear written proposal and you should include the next steps. Like what exactly? Well, no matter what size company you are, even if you're a one-man band, a one-woman band, you can do a deal. Uh, what's important, though, is to be able to nail what it is you want to accomplish. What are you trying to do? Uh, what will be the responsibilities of both parties? Uh, and what will be the outcome of this? How will you sort of make this happen uh, in terms of moving it forward? How will you communicate this to customers? Those kinds of things are particularly important in terms of next steps. What will the customer see and experience? All right, legally speaking, how complicated is it to put uh, together a deal and do you need an attorney? Well, uh, deals can be uh, very simple. They can also be very complex. Uh, it depends on how intertwined you are uh, as an organization. I think that once you, you deal with the business issues first and understand the business issues, then it will be clearer to you whether or not you should involve 
an attorney. My recommendation is that you certainly should talk to an attorney about the implications of a deal anyway, because uh, business disputes are, are certainly not uncommon. Okay, and you know, some people might be a little uh, scared to go talk to an attorney because they think it's too expensive, but you can get a short meeting at least, right? Oh, absolutely. You can certainly get a short meeting. Sometimes you can get someone uh, who's a friend of a friend or a relative to just give you some advice, but you've got to give them something concrete to look at and understand so they'll know how they can advise you. Okay, and how extensive should your proposal be? Uh, it depends. If you're dealing with another entrepreneur, you might be able to just do a one-page uh, email. You might be able to do it in a very uh, a short way. If you're dealing with a large organization, you're going to have to do something a little bit more ex extensive because a lot of people will want to look at that. Mm -hmm. You're going to need uh, uh, what the rights, responsibilities will be, milestones, what's involved. A lot more detail is involved. Okay, we're almost out of time, but how do you close the deal and get someone to take action? You close the deal by giving attention. You uh, get them to take action by understanding how to overcome obstacles and stalls and you can only do that by really building a good relationship with them and staying in in contact all right great advice as always andre taylor author of you can still win thanks so much my pleasure all right have a good day now let's check out some of those tech headlines. A federal judge has given the green light to a class action lawsuit over Apple's iPhone. The suit takes aim at Apple's locking of the iPhone so that it can only be used with AT&T. It says consumers who signed up for a two-year contract would be locked in for longer because of Apple's exclusive deal with AT&T. Anyone who purchased an iPhone since its original debut can join the suit. So, who's been using the iPad since it made its debut two months ago? Yahoo's blog has been keeping track. The company says the majority of users are still men, but women are quickly catching up. Also, an earlier survey found news and sports sites are popular with iPad users. Now, shopping and travel sites are growing in popularity, too. Hotmail is trying to win back scores of lost customers. According to USA Today, Hotmail is adding a new features to help users deal with spam and cluttered mailboxes. There are also reportedly plans to integrate other Microsoft features like Instant Messenger and Bing Search. An online version of MS Office and the SkyDrive storage system could also be included. Apple reportedly wants to change how we watch TV. The company is said to be redesigning the Apple TV, and one feature it will include is the ability to rent TV episodes for 99 cents. Just like iTunes movie rentals now, users would have 30 days to watch the show, which would be streamed instead of downloaded. For more on all of these stories and all your tech headlines, check out the technology page of abcnews.com. That's all the Money Matters for now. I'm Meg Oliver in New York. Stay tuned for more news that's good to know. Thanks for watching.